Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Sputnik was a giant leap forward for mankind when it officially placed the United States behind in the space race in 1957. It forced the USA to catch up rapidly and develop systems that would put them ahead in the race. The US has some weird ideas about launching super advanced satellites into space. These days, placing satellites into orbit is not that complicated. The Defense Support Program, DSP Satellite, managed by the Air Force Space Command, plays a crucial role in North America's early warning systems. DSP satellites, positioned in geosynchronous orbits at 22,300 miles, play a crucial role in detecting missile launches, space launches, and nuclear detonations. Sputnik 1 was the first satellite to be sent into space in 1957, marking the start of the space age. The U.S. then sent Vanguard 1, which failed. Explorer 1, America's first successful satellite, launched in 1958 and proved to be a success. It discovered the Van Allen radiation belts, a big step forward in space research. Modern satellites are still launched using rocket technology developed from the 1940s onward. Of course, today's rockets are much more advanced and powerful but the math remains the same. There are hundreds of different rockets worldwide, including the Atlas V 500, which can have up to five additional booster rockets attached. I didn't know what to expect. I've never seen a launch before. Once you get to see uh, what it all goes to, like we did today, uh, then it's then it really uh, it's really worth it in the end. Even with the advanced rockets used by SpaceX and NASA, the hardest lessons are learned through trial and error, which is a very costly enterprise. Fortunately. The USA has expertise to fall back on, including rocket and meteorological scientists who are alive today and were part of Vanguard 1 and Explorer 1. There is, however, a new concept for much cheaper satellite launches. DARPA. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency is responsible for concepts based on technology that is available or within reach. One of their concepts is the Airborne Launch Assist Space Access Program, ALASA. ALASA will be able to send 100-pound satellites into low Earth orbit, LEO, 
for less than $1 million each within 24 hours of being called up. The latest version of Alasa plans to use regular jet airplanes to launch a cheap, one-time use launch vehicle. The plane would have to fly to a high altitude and then deploy the launch vehicle. A two-stage rocket system would send the payload to the right orbit. As planned, the program is testing new technologies very carefully so that they can be used in the future to make revolutionary satellite launch systems that make going to space cheaper, more regular, and more reliable. There were weapons capable of destroying enemy satellites as well. An anti-satellite ASAT missile was specifically engineered to destroy satellites that are in orbit. Once impacted, it unfortunately also generates a field of debris, which increases the chances of collisions with other satellites and spacecraft. Officially known as the ASM-135 ASAT program, it originated during the Cold War as a component of the United States' endeavor to establish anti-satellite capabilities. The program, which began in the late 1970s, aimed to develop a missile capable of intercepting and eliminating enemy satellites. The ASM-135 missile was specifically engineered for deployment from an F-15 fighter plane, rendering it a distinctive airborne anti-satellite armament. Space debris is a growing concern, with over 11,000 pieces of junk being tracked. But there are smaller pieces that are not being tracked. One of the reasons why there is so much space junk is that it can take 25 years for space junk to fall back to Earth. A promising system called Dragnet has been invented to bring space junk down in about two years, which will clear space for other satellites to be placed in the orbit occupied by junk. It is critical that the military be able to see into space. The Space Surveillance Telescope, SST, is a terrestrial telescope created by DARPA and situated in Western Australia. The Space Surveillance Telescope utilizes an 11 and a half foot primary mirror and a curved focal surface to effectively identify and monitor celestial objects, such as satellites, space debris, and asteroids. The telescope's sophisticated optics and sensor systems allow it to identify objects with a diameter as tiny as four inches at 22,369 miles. The SST is employed to monitor and identify objects located in geosynchronous orbit, such as space debris. Another system in use is in Hawaii.
the Maui Space Surveillance Complex, operated by Air Force Space Command, is located at an elevation of 10,000 feet above sea level on the peak of Haleakala, an inactive volcano on the island of Maui. This exceptional site is widely regarded as one of the finest locations on the planet for observing celestial objects, thanks to its limited light pollution and pristine air conditions. The facility houses multiple sophisticated telescopes, including the Advanced Electrical Optical System, AEOS, and the Maui Space Surveillance System, MSSS. These telescopes are used to monitor and track various objects that orbit the Earth, such as satellites, space debris, and asteroids. Mankind is expected to return to the moon and go to Mars within a decade or less. To do that, systems are being developed as we speak. These include the recovery of spacecraft like the Orion capsule, which will splash down in the ocean using parachutes after its mission. Subsequently, the rescue team will employ a U.S. Navy San Antonio-class amphibious assault ship to retrieve the spacecraft and its crew. NASA is undergoing comprehensive training to ensure preparedness for this recovery, including simulated splashdowns and recovery operations. The training encompasses the practical application of deploying recovery equipment, such as recovery winches and personnel transfer units, to guarantee a secure and effective recovery process. In 2020, the Super Guppy aircraft arrived in Ohio to transport the Orion spacecraft to the Kennedy Space Center. The Orion spacecraft is an essential element of the NASA Artemis mission. Orion is specifically designed to explore deep space. Its ultimate objective is transporting astronauts to the moon and even farther destinations. The Super Guppy, featuring a unique articulated nose and spacious cargo compartment, is perfectly suited for securely transporting sizable and fragile objects like the Orion spacecraft. The Morell Operations Center played a crucial part on August 29, 2022 during NASA's inaugural launch attempt of the Artemis I rocket. Artemis I is a crucial flight test that aims to launch NASA's space launch system, SLS rocket, and the uncrewed Orion spacecraft on a voyage circumnavigating the moon. This test served as a first step for the Artemis II mission to transport astronauts. The facility, 
formerly called the Range Operations Control Center, Rock, is widely known as the Morell Operations Center, Mock. The Mission Activity Center, MOC, is crucial in coordinating and supervising launch activities, guaranteeing the proper functioning of all systems and strict adherence to safety procedures. The successful implementation of Artemis I is a crucial milestone in NASA's lofty objectives. The practice was implemented when the Orion spacecraft was successfully retrieved by the amphibious transport dock, USS Portland, on December 11, 2022. This pivotal undertaking signified a momentous advancement in NASA's Artemis program. To secure and extract Orion from the Pacific Ocean, the recovery crew utilized small boats, divers, and a special winch mechanism. The partnership between NASA and the U.S. Navy almost guarantees the secure retrieval of the spacecraft. This unmanned Artemis I mission was the prelude to the Artemis II, which will be manned. Mankind has come far from the days of Sputnik 1 and Explorer 1. Rockets have become larger, and innovative means have been found to place satellites cheaply into orbit. Our next evolution will see us walking on the moon and eventually on the planet Mars, 140 million miles from Earth. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.